Hello again, guys. Time to time to move forward with our uh, with our trading manual, and this is chapter uh, chapter four. Time to look for the rising wedge and falling wedge patterns. Rising wedge is a bearish. Um, it, it is a bearish structure, and the falling wedge it is a bullish structure. At least this is what the, the what the theory says. And uh, this is uh, very much true with one big problem. The rising wedge, <coughs> rising wedge and falling wedges are not reversal patterns. So if you're looking for, if you're looking for them to, to have the same, uh, the same meaning as a double, double top or double bottom or the inverse head and shoulder or head and shoulder, then look for that no more because this is not the case. They do have a, they do have a, a target meaning a measure move, and that is only 50% of the same uh, pattern. Now why, why these wedges are so important, <coughs> are so important um, in trading is because, um, because they usually appear at the end or at the beginning of a new move. However, they are extremely tricky uh, because they may signal the end of a trend or a beginning of a new one and this is why uh, they are not considered reversal patterns. Many people consider them as being reversal patterns, but this is only, this is only, um, let's say, um, misleading. As sometimes out of a wedge, uh, over a rising wedge, for example, you are looking for the price to come down, only to be found in a situation that the price explodes actually higher. So the wedge actually uh, actually breaks into into the uh, desired uh, direction, but uh, only goes for the uh, measured move. And reverses and reverses pretty much against you. Now, what is what I'm what I'm trying to do in this recording is to show you an example of a rising wedge and uh, and a bullish uh, and sorry and the falling wedge. A rising wedge may take the shape of a leading diagonal, for example, in terms of Elliott waves. When you're looking for uh, for a wave uh, for a move to the upside, and you have that the shape of uh, of a wedge. Then you might you might have uh, you might have a leading diagonal, or a rising wedge may also take the shape of an ending diagonal. The only difference between the two is that uh, the trend line draw from the end of the first wave to the end of the third wave must be pierced in the in the ending diagonal structure or not be pierced in the leading diagonal. What you have in here it is a one-hour chart on the euro dollar, and I want to show you. This, um, this structure in here, this structure in here looks like a rising wedge as you can see and this is how a rising wedge should look like something like this and of course that we all know that rising wedges are falling now if you were to put a, a, num a count on this, on, this, um, on this structure then this looks like, this looks like an ending diagonal with five ways to the upside, so this to be something like one, the first wave, and then the second wave like this, then the third way to come in here, and the fourth wave in here, and the fifth wave in here. Sorry, the fourth wave in here, and the fifth wave in here. Now extremely important, like I mentioned before, a rising wedge can be met at the end of a move and in this case it is being called an ending diagonal in terms of Elliott waves structures and on an ending diagonal if you take a if you take a trend line from the end of the first wave, so from here and connect the end of the first wave with the end of the third wave in here then this trend line usually it is being pierced. It is not mandatory but usually it is being pierced and then the, the price starts to fall. Now this is being called an ending diagonal. If for, if for, um, for, for example the, the rising wedge would have been something like 1, 2, 3, 4, but the fifth wave would make a high compared with the third wave in here, but not touching, not touching the, uh, the trend line, the, up, the upper trend line, then this would have been a called a leading diagonal and the chances were that this being only the first wave of, an, of a bigger move to the upside. So in our case in here the wedge starts at this moment of time, in this point, and ends, and ends in 
here and this is the wedge let let me just take a shape and try to put it like this and you might even write down so that uh, it remains with you so this is being called a rising wedge as a as an ending diagonal and we we all know that according to according to the theory and you might write down in here that rising wedges are falling there is that means you're looking for you're looking for the price to come to the downside at least for the measured move and remember the measured move being 50% of uh, of the of the rising wedge So this is a rising wedge and I, I am trying to find now an example of a folding wedge. Basically they are the same, mirroring, uh, mirroring images. If the rising wedge signals the end of a move, the potential end of a move, then of course uh, uh, the potential move to the upside and of course that the folding wedge signals the uh, potential um, um, end of a move to the downside. And in here, this is a 4 hour chart and this looks like a... Uh, like a um, Folding wedge, if you take a trend line from here, for example, like this, and another trend line like this, okay, so this looks like a, uh, a folding wedge, you see that the um, the base in here, it is, being, it is pointing like this being a wedge, in terms of value of waves, this is being called an, uh, um, a one, a wave one, possible wave one. Then the second wave in here. Then the third wave in here. Then the fourth wave in here. And then the fifth wave in here. So one, two, three, four, five takes the form of a wedge, and folding wedges we know that they are they are rising. So our wedge actually starts actually starts from this moment in here and ends at this moment in here. So let's take a shape and try to mark try to mark it like this and just writing down that this is being called a folding wedge and so that we know what a folding wedge is folding wedges are rising and folding wedges are rising and that means that price has the tendency to break the folding wedges uh, falling wedges to the upside and price has a ten the tendency to break the uh, rising wedges into the downside the recording what I tried to show you in, the, in this recording was uh, was this example of a rising wedge and, and of course the example of the falling wedge but what should to, but uh, what you should keep in mind are two important things. Well, these patterns are not reversal patterns, this is extremely important, and they are extremely risky, because most traders look at them as turning points, when in fact they might just signal a powerful move to come in the original direction. So careful with these ones, but nevertheless are extremely, extremely common, especially when trading currency markets. As a book recommendation for this chapter, I have um, also the same Martin J. Pring, Technical Analysis Explained, a wonderful book. All these uh, all this, um, patterns are in there. Next chapter will deal with, uh, with triangles. We're going to take a look at a contracting triangle and an expanding triangle. So until then, stay safe on the markets.